You know, ladies and gentlemen, over the last 20 seasons, especially the postseason, the Toronto Maple Leafs have been a joke where uh, they either uh, do well in the regular season or choke in the playoffs. But today we're going to be talking about the real Toronto Maple Leaf team that maybe started all this cult, the cultus of the uh, the Bud Faithful. It's probably one of the greatest NHL teams of all time. Nobody talks about it anymore. The 31-32 Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, this was the first team that was called Maple Leafs to win a cup. Now, the franchise had won as Toronto before, the arenas and St. Pat's. But this was their first cup as the Maple Leafs. Now, the 32 season was Toronto's 15th in the NHL. The Maple Leafs were coming off their best regular season uh, record in team history in 31. As the club set team records of wins and points with 23 and 53 respectively, finishing in second place to gain division. That year, Toronto then won three playoff rounds to win the Stanley Cup, first as the Maple Leafs and third in the history of the franchise. Now, prior to the campaign, the NHL announced that the schedule would increase from 44 to 48 games. Also, the Maple Leafs announced they were moving from the Arena Gardens, which had been their home since entering the NHL in 1917, to the n- newly constructed Maple Leaf Gardens, thus why they were called the Toronto Arenas at the first. Now, Toronto started the campaign off slowly, going winless in the first five games, which cost head coach Art Duncan his job. He was replaced by former Chicago Blackhawks head coach Dick Irvin. Having to travel from his home in Winnipeg, Irving joined the club for December 1st game after Smite uh, coached the team to the first win of the season against the Bruins. The hiring of Irving would pay off immediately as the Leafs got hot and had an 8-3-2 record in his first month behind the bench. The Leafs continued to play good hockey for the remainder of the season, finishing with a team record 23 victories and tying the club record with 53 points. Toronto finished in second place in the Kane division behind the Habs and qualified the playoffs for the second straight season. Now, the the big line, of course, was Busher Jackson, Joe Primo, and, uh, of course, Charlie Conacher. Uh, Busher had uh, led the NHL with 53 points with 28 goals and 25 assists in 48 games. Line mate Joe Primo led the league with 37 assists to finish second to Jackson in league scoring with 50 points. Charlie Conacher posted an NHL high 34 goals and finished fourth in league scoring with 48. Defenseman King Clancy anchored the blue line, scoring a big 10 goals and 19 points, while Red Horn provided the team's toughness, getting a club-high 97 penalty minutes. In goal, the great Lauren Shabbat had another very solid season, winning a team-high 22 games, while posting a 2.36 goals against average and earning four shutouts uh, along the way. Shabbat, again, uh, the, the, the backstop uh, that was probably the most underrated at the time. Now, overseen by Leafs man and managing director Connie Smite, the new Maple Leaf Gardens were built in six months during 1931 at a total cost of $1.5 million, which would be in a $50 to $100 million range now. The site was purchased from the T. Eaton Company Limited for a price said to be $150,000 below market value. The building was designed by the architectural firm of Ross and McDonald. Construction was partly funded through a public offering of 7% preferred shares in a new corporation, Maple Leaf Gardens Limited, at $10 each, with a free common share for each five preferred shares purchased. Smythe and the Toronto Maple Leaf Hockey Club Limited transferred ownership of the hockey team to the new corporation in return for shares. Now, the contract to construct the building was awarded to Thompson Brothers Construction of Port Credit, uh, Ontario, in the Toronto Township. Thompson Brothers bid just under 990000 for the project. The lowest of the 10 tenders received, mainly due to the fact that amongst the Thompson Brothers various enterprise, they had much of the subcontract work covered, and others could, others could not compete in this uh, manner. Now, the uh, that price did not include steelwork, was estimated an additional $100,000. Construction began sharp at midnight on June 1st, 31, and what is to this day considered to be an outstanding accomplishment, the gardens was built in under five months and two weeks. Now, W.A. Hewitt, sports editor of Toronto Star, was hired as the GM to oversee all events other than pro hockey. His son, Foster, was then hired to run the radio broadcast. The gardens opened on November 12, 31, with the Maple Leafs losing 2-1 to the Blackhawks. Reported attendance on opening night was 13,542, and the rest literally is history. Now, that first Stanley Cup was pretty well a given because the the momentum coming uh, with the Battle of Depression put a lot of pressure on Toronto to succeed, and therefore that's what they did. So that year, of course, Montreal 25-16-7, 
finishing four ahead of points against Toronto. Maroons in third in 1922 and seven. And the Canadian division also had the New York Americans, 16, 24, and eight. Now, uh, that year, Toronto did quite well. They opened the playoffs against the Blackhawks in a two game total goal series. The Blackhawks had a record of 18, 19, 11, earning 47 points and finished in second place in the American division. The Leafs dropped the opening game by a close 1 0 counter to Chicago. However, they returned over the second game, and Toronto uh, clobbered the Blackhawks 6 1, winning the total goal series 6 2, advancing to the second round. Toronto's next opponent was the very tough Montreal Maroons, another two game total goal series. The Maroons had finished by Toronto Canadian Division with a 1927 7 record with 43 points. Now, the Maroons defeated the Detroit Falcons the opening round of its playoffs in an upset. The series opened, get this, at a Montreal Forum, and the game ended a 1 1 tie. The second game was played at Maple Leaf Gardens, and Toronto used home ice to their advantage, defeating the Maroons 3 2 in overtime to win the series 4 3 and move to the Cup Finals. Now, when they played the Rangers in a best of five series to determine the winner of the 32 Stanley Cup, the Rangers were favored as they finished first place in the American Division with a 23 17 8 record with 54 points. They had defeated the Habs in an upset four games to advance to the finals. When the series opened at MSG in New York, however, it was the Leafs who struck first, defeating the Rangers 6 4. The second game in a set was moved from New York to the Boston Garden due to the circus had been booked for the Rangers' home arena. Toronto took a full advantage of this and easily defeated the Rangers 6 2 to come with the victory of the Cup. The series moved to Toronto for the third game, and Toronto completed the sweep, defeating uh, New York 6 4 and winning their third Stanley Cup in team history, uh, the first in 22 and the first as the Leafs. Uh, the last couple of scores were the Toronto St. Pats. Now, the kid line of Jackson, Connick, and Primo combined for eight goals in the three title uh, games. Now, the regular season, again, it started slow for Toronto, but once you got momentum, it was a lot better. You only lost uh, two uh, two games at the end of the season between February 27th and uh, March 20th. Now, uh, the season, regular season against uh, Butcher Jackson, 28 goals, Primo 13, Conacher 34, Andrew Blair 9, Bob Gracie 13, Frank Finnegan at 8, King Clancy, Clancy led all defensemen with 10, Bale Baldy Cotton at 5, Red Horner at 7, Hap Day at 7, Harold Dara De- at 5, Ace Bailey at 8, Alex Levinsky at 5, Earl Miller at 3 goals in 15 games, uh, Lauren Shabbat and Benny Grant were the goalies, Sid Howe played 3 games that did Fred Robinson. Now, that year was quite kind of weird because he had six goalies. King Clancy played uh, one game, uh, and so did Red Horner and Alex uh, Levinsky. Uh, now, Shabbat was 22-16-6, and six, but uh, Benny Grant had one, two, and one. Now, in the playoffs, Conacher led all the scores with eight uh, points, including six goals. Busher had five goals and seven points. Hap Day had three uh, counters. Joe Primo had six assists. And Frankie Finnegan had two, Bob Gracie three, Andy Blair two, Baldy Cotton two, Red Horner two, King Clancy two, Ace Bailey as well scored. And in the postseason, Shabbat uh, went uh, five and one to lead the cup. Now, ironically, it was a it was a a very very what do you call interesting season. Um, Harold Darrow was picked up from the Bruins in June. Frank Finnegan, Sid Howe got to the Swarsel Gat draft players from the Ottawa. Earl Miller was taken by from Chicago in February, and then Fred Robinson to fill out the roster. Now, for a lot of us in the media, we point to that season as kind of the birth of what's called the, the first golden age of hockey between 31 and about 1960, because you had Foster Hewitt, no Maple Leaf Gardens, he wouldn't have been hired to be the announcer, and he brought uh, the NHL to Canada, Newfoundland, and every way possible. The Maple Leafs became legendary. That was used for wrestling, boxing, was uh, one of the most major venues for multiple sports, music, different stuff. But Maple Leaf fans of the modern era should learn more. By the way, anything in the modern era of the Maple Leafs is banned from my column, like my podcast. But we're going to be talking more about these teams in the past because it's good to celebrate. In my mind, I was the first super line on a superstar team that really hit their momentum at the right time. The kid line, my God, and, uh, you know, the amount of uh, people that demotivated. Toronto became a hockey hotbed yet again because of that line. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing with our intro vintage podcast, let us know what a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And stay cool if you can. Bye.